Well, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, we are live with uh, Jonathan from Checkley, currently from Checkley. <laughs> you can tell me about uh, the history of where we where we first met. Uh, but yeah, as we as we join for uh, and wait for people to uh, join us today on our live stream, uh, we'll just uh, start with a little bit of chit chat and then. Jonathan has actually some cool things to to show us. So, uh, yeah, welcome everyone, and welcome Jonathan. Uh, most cool. most importantly, how are you? <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm I'm really good. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm super excited to be here today and talk with you about something very different than what we normally talk about or what we have historically <laughs> talked about. Um, what, from my time uh, in Cyprus. Um, I mean, so, we talked yeah, about um, Cyprus and play, right? That was the main topic we discussed at, <laughs> at the time when we were most in, in contact. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so uh, uh, so yeah, let's let's start with an introduction. We were kind of bridged that already because uh, you were working uh, in Cyprus. For how many years? Yeah. For how long? And what did you for do there? Two, for two years, yeah, for two years, I was the uh, customer success team lead, um, which means that, you know, uh, I definitely explored a lot of Cyprus, spent a lot of time digging into it, uh, spending a lot of time with developers, uh, both internally and externally to figure out how best to leverage that tool. Um, and also got to fi find out some like really cool things along the way. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I really fell in love with while I was there was people using Cyprus, right, to uh, monitor in production, like to really just use this tool in a way that was just off the shelf sort of use, um, off the record sort of use and like extend its ability. Like anytime I worked with customers, users who were really taking Cyprus to some next level, that was always like the most exciting thing. Uh, and obviously working with ambassadors and stuff, because y'all are always doing really interesting things. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I, I remember I remember one of the, one of the earlier blogs, uh, it was actually from ambassador uh, Stefano Magni, uh, and he uh, wrote a blog post. I think it was even in, on Cyprus blog. I, I don't remember anymore, but he did uh, this kind of monitoring uh, check using Cyprus wh where he would uh, have just a couple of tests and they would hit different URLs, make sure that they return uh, proper status codes. And uh, and it was, it, it was an interesting use case. So that's like currently what you do, right? This is the area you are interested in right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So I guess we actually have uh, a repository pulled up right now. Oh um, yeah, let's we'll, we'll uh, get let's into share this. that. Or is cool. is that too early? Um, <laughs> I think it's too early. I think it might be too early. Okay, uh, okay. Let's let's hide this. You know. Let's hide this. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, but but yeah, I think uh, you know, just so the the audience is caught up now. Um, I I actually left Cyprus and I'm with a company called Checkly. And what they do uh, is something really cool. And they use uh, playwright tests, right, uh, to monitor and production. Uh, mm -hmm. So that very thing, right, that very thing you, you just said, like, hey, you know, a while ago I saw something that was interesting where someone was, you know, using Cypress to essentially like run a cron job and just make sure their site was up. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of like the lowest level of synthetic monitoring. Um, what I'm talking about, what we're talking about today, right, is what I think uh, based on, you know, again, working with users and customers for like the last two years about testing in general is where things are going, right? Mm -hmm. So where end-to-end -end testing is evolving. Uh, and that's what that's what Checkly is doing. It just so happens that they're doing it with Playwright, you know? Yeah, and that that's interesting because I in my previous job we were uh, we were just taking a little peek into the into the synthetic uh, testing. I think we were using New Relic 
for that and there are some synthetic checks that uh you can um you can hook up to like a selenium uh test i know there was a time where i tried to play with that uh so so checkly is kind of the same idea maybe we should explain what syn synthetic uh, checks are because i happen to have a little bit of experience with that but uh there there may be some people in the audience who don't who don't know what that is we kind of described it already but if you were to give definition or what kind of problem that solves what what would be your answer yeah so interestingly enough i mean if you think about what you're doing with Cypress and what you're doing with Playwright when you're using them as testing frameworks, you're creating end-to-end -end tests that most closely mirrors the user's experience on your application, on your website, right? Mm -hmm. So synthetic monitoring is you are trying to most closely mirror a user's experience against your production level environment. If that doesn't right. sound like pretty much the same thing, <laughs> right, that's 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 what Checkly's doing. Like that's that's what synthetic monitoring is. I think something to point out here, though, is that tools like, you know, other tools, because I don't want to badmouth any any other tools. <laughs> other tools, um, other tools. The way that they're accomplishing synthetic monitoring isn't from a developer first standpoint, right? And so what I mean by that is you already have written these end-to-end -end tests, right? You've spent however much time developing these really great tests. And then when you go to create some synthetic monitors or when you want to get feedback about how your site's actually performing once you, you know, have merged some code, all of a sudden you have to create these synthetic monitors by navigating by UI, by adopting some clunky interface. With Checkly, right, you don't have to do that because you're literally just using your same playwright test right out of the box. Yeah. And and uh, I I guess the the question would be is is that uh, for for uh, playwright only? So for those synthetic checks, you can only only use playwright. So that's that's what the solution is built on. Or are there some other options for for different frameworks? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, that's a great question. So uh, with Checkly, it initially started off as Puppeteer and Playwright, mm -hmm. um, but now uh, we are moving just to solely support Playwright because as I'm sure most people that are, you know, watching this, even you yourself know, Playwright's iterating so, so fast. Uh, they just launched their new UI mode, what, last, last week, the week before, something like yep. that. Um, it's, it's a full-time job just to keep up with them and make sure you're covering everything <laughs> that they're putting out, right? And and technically, they're the fastest, most reliable framework out there. I'm ha I'm happy to I'm happy to kind of go into that further if you want to go there, <laughs> Philip. It's uh it's debatable. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. I mean, they're they're uh, obviously doing a lot of things uh, right. So I I think if uh, if we're talking about like healthy competition, uh, playwright team is definitely providing that. And I'm 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 kind of curious where that where that will go in the uh, in following days and years and weeks and months. So uh, so yeah, I I move I um, uh, peeked into playwright a little more in a couple of weeks and yeah I, what i can say like uh i would say they're not like there it's definitely cypress has some has some um uh is ahead in some uh things uh but uh, with the, as you mentioned with the speed there uh they are progressing i think they might be catching up uh sooner than we might think so we'll see yeah, absolutely. I don't want to. I don't want to bring up any of the Cypress <laughs> versus uh, Playwright multiple iterations you did at Apple Tools, but yeah, I, I, I hear I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super I'm super excited to walk through this today. Uh, should we outline maybe how we're going to approach uh, the call? Would that be useful? Yeah, yeah, we can uh, we can do that. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so I think what we'll do uh, because. In the, in the post I shared on LinkedIn, so I made myself accountable for this. Uh, we're gonna deploy some some end-to-end -to -end tests to Checkly and monitor them 
in less than three minutes. It's really going to be like 10 seconds, but that's what we'll start off with. <laughs> and we'll just kind of like walk through, right, ex exactly what's happening there. And then I think it would be useful, Philip. Are you monitoring your website right now? Are you doing uh, this? No, no, I'm not. I'm just no. using analytics to to check whether everything, uh, uh, whether people are still reading my blog. <laughs> and uh, no. and then I run tests when I deploy. Right? That's that's the standard way. That's the good way. Are you telling me I'm, I'm doing something wrong? So is there, let me, let me ask you this, Philip, is there, is there like a way to check out on your, on your website, right? Is there a way for me to give you money, like uh, to pay for some services or something? Uh, right at this exact moment, no. But if you were to ask me two weeks ago, uh, when I was trying to get people to join my workshop, then, uh, then yes. Uh, but at this point I have no workshop announced, but uh, I will do so soon, hopefully. We'll see. Okay. Well, <laughs> but yeah, it yeah. is a money-making well, website. That's, I guess, that's what you were asking. That's that's exactly what I'm asking. So, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, maybe no one scheduled the workshop because it wasn't working in production. So, if you would have had some checks <laughs> running all the time to make sure your site was doing what it's supposed to do, who knows? Who knows where where things would be today? Yeah. Well, you can you can set up synthetic check that will go through the payment and actually purchase my workshop. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely on your staging site only um, yeah okay cool. <laughs> cool. um so so we'll do that and then uh we'll just kind of make it a uh a, a choose your own adventure game so we'll either do we'll either you know create like uh a new way of uh running checks that's kind of like off-brand usage Mm -hmm. Or we'll explore the API assertion builder that Checkly offers through its CLI. Cool. Yep. Let's uh, let's jump in. Cool. Let me go ahead and throw my screen up. All right. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> people can now see see the screen. So we see the VS Code, and that's the. So you prepare the project, right? Or is this like a scaffold, right. or what? What are we looking at? So what you're looking at right now is a repository, and I'll just share the link with you to share with folks if they want to download it and play around. Sweet. It's a essentially it's a it's like a proof of concept repository, right? Mm -hmm. When I was first getting started uh, here at Checkly, I just wanted to see right like how could someone adopt Checkly in a way that was most similar to how they're already running checks today. And that's what you see here. Um, here's a series, right? We're in our test directory. Mm -hmm. And there's a series of subdirectories, right? Subfolders uh, that have playwright tests baked into them. Mm -hmm. That's all this repository is. It's just playwright and checkly. So if I do something like uh, playwright test, we're going to run all of our tests, right? Mm -hmm. All 40 of them. And they're running, I think, Think some of them will fail that's totally fine uh that kind of doesn't matter but we're running them that's cool but what we can also do once we get these results back is that we can say yeah 36 passed three failed one was interrupted more likely was going to fail yep. what we can also do we can do something like this right because right now you can see we're actually running against production assets here. Mm -hmm. So if I do this, I'm actually going to run those same specs right now that I just ran uh, with MPX Playwright Test. We are using those same specs right now to run against production environment, like your production environment using awesome. our infrastructure. So my so, machine isn't the one currently executing these tests. That's why they're failing all over the place, right? Um, my machine isn't the one currently running these tests. Our infrastructure at Checkly is using these same specs and then running them uh, in, in production against this live website. All right. right? So, so the, the project is... Uh... Uh, so the project is already like on GitHub. You shared the link. 
So when you yeah. run that npx checkly, that's going to use the uh, the origin, right? So it's not like tunneling through your computer. As you said, these tests are not running on your computer. They're running on what they're running on. Are they running on CI or they're using or there is an infrastructure on checkly that's being used to run these tests? Great. Great question. So what you can see here in our Checkly config is that I've chosen what locations, what AWS locations mm -hmm. I want my tests or I want my deployed checks to run from. Mm -hmm. So when we do something like NPX Checkly test, we are running from our primary location first, mm -hmm. and that's where we're testing or checking, hey, does this site do what it's supposed to do right within these spec files yep. and i want to show you something actually uh and this was just updated by one of my team members this week uh he's awesome his name's geo uh he actually made it <laughs> he actually made it so that this website just sometimes randomly goes down right so right. we are so lucky right now that this is one of those times where the website goes down <laughs> so what you can see here, right, is that we have this nice little error message letting us know, hey, this is on purpose, everything's cool. But what's really great and what I want to kind of highlight here is that this, let's actually, we're going to skip a step and then we're going to come back to this. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to MPX checkly deploy right now. And it sounds like excuse my console logs i love using console logs my bad um <laughs> but what we're going to do right now is we're going to deploy these checks to this checkly dashboard right so you see it right now those same those same checks right those same tests that are here are now running here and I've added tags to them that let me know, hey, this is critical. This is a user flow. This is CLI. And I did this all by NPX checkly deploying mm -hmm. those, those tests that we saw. But what's really great is that these tests are now failing, right? These checks are now failing against a production environment. Yep. But because we're using checkly to do synthetic monitoring, right? We get far more insight into what's actually going wrong here. Again, we were talking about, you know, under the hood, Checkly uses playwright test. Yeah. So this should look really familiar. Yeah. So we you have the trace, trace available viewer. to you. Nice. Right? Like just baked, baked in already, right? I can watch the video if I want. Mm -hmm. um, you get this nice error log. You see exactly what's going wrong. But what you also get that you're not going to get right um, just out of the box using playwright tests is you have all these really great web vitals as well, right? Mm -hmm. If I was doing something like monitoring my services with Checkly, I could know, hey, what's causing this, right? Like what's going, what's going on, what's going on here that's actually yep. making this uh, error happen. So. For a lot of folks that are, you know, working for companies right now where they have staging environments, right, and they're pushing code, um, you know, into staging, and let's say it's really flaky, kind of like what we just saw here. Um, yeah. It's it's really flaky. Uh, those tests are failing. One second. Let me pull up my uh, my IDE. Oh, there it is. Um, it's flaky, right? So seven mm -hmm. out of 12 of our tests failed, but we're going to YOLO it anyway, and we're going to merge the code. If we were monitoring our staging environment, we would know definitively before we merge that code, something was already wrong. We would be able to answer and say, hey, actually the environment was having trouble at that time when we decided to merge our code versus yeah. crossing our fingers and hoping that yeah. we know that that the that the that the uh, environment's unstable, but this is also true for production, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's the same thing. I'm sorry, I've I've said a whole lot. What what are your <laughs> thoughts here? I, I'm just uh, super excited. I love. It. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's great. Like, uh, not only 
you can check whether the site is live, but you're actually writing a test that will go through those uh, through those pages. It, it kind of reminded me of a of a development release flow that I have seen probably on uh, on one of Gleb's uh, Gleb's blogs, where he would uh, create this this pipeline where you would have your run your old tests if they are all green it's good to be deployed if you if you deploy then uh, after the deploy get the url of production or you already have it because it's production and then run just a couple of tests to make sure everything went went smooth uh, so that sends a message that hey <laughs> the, the production is actually where where the, uh, where people are using the application, where the business happens, right? Uh, and yet we are testing everything on staging. So we should probably care about production more, although we don't really want to break the data, etc. cetera. Uh, but having, uh, having a nice set of tests that can run on their own infrastructure, so you don't have to like set up your own pipeline and uh, have like this kind of synthetic monitoring of uh, of the basic flows of the basic user stories is uh, is kind of nice. I think I think it sounds uh, sounds really good. So you when when we were talking about the configuration and the different um, different AWS uh, locations, uh, does that mm. mean that users that want to use Checkly need to have AWS, or this is again something that's that's part of the of the Checkly system, and it actually provides you with the, these locations, and you can run your tests from those. I guess the Absolutely. the B yeah. is the correct answer. <laughs> exactly. B, like if you can tell by my dumb smile on my face and how much I'm <laughs> nodding, the answer is absolutely yes. Right. So that's a part of what Checkly offers. Uh, mm -hmm. What you just described, right? Like, let's say for this group, we're going to click on this group of uh, checks. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and edit it. Let's go to locations, right? We have the ability to choose multiple of these locations, one of these locations, even though it's not recommended as you yeah. see here, uh, <laughs> because every now and then those that check will fail. And then you'll want to ensure that, hey, maybe AWS just went down at that location. You want to back up, right? You want to be able to check another location, but this yeah. is just what's offered out of the box. What you also just, just described, right, uh, about Gleb's, uh, maybe one of Gleb's posts or workflows, he creates so much content, it's hard to keep up with, <laughs> um, is something that we just kind of give you out of the box, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is it, right? So we're looking at a GitHub Actions YAML file, All and right. it leads to exactly that. So if the outcome okay. <laughs> of your tests were success, deploy it, right? So it's not this it's not this cumbersome thing anymore, right? Where, mm -hmm. hey, I have to set up this cron job. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and try to test some of these tests after they've deployed. We've, we've done all the work for you if you're using Playwright. It's just, it's there. You don't need to be set up on AWS. We're doing that for you, right? Yeah, so... And then I think... Go for it. So, so while we're on the topic of cron jobs, uh, I see this uh, this workflow definition where you sort of trigger that npx checkly mm -hmm. deploy was it? Yeah, uh, deploy. So, uh, what is the what is like the main usage of of checkly? Do you test like after you deploy, or you actually test continually, and then deploy just updates those tests those uh, those checks. So yeah, that's a that's a that's a really great question. So first of all, first of all, I want to apologize because of where I come from in my background, right, and working for Cypress and you know mainly focused on ETE integration and component testing and things like that. I do not pay enough attention to the API testing portion of <laughs> just the work in the world in general, right? Um, but Checkly is for both API and browser checks, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see that kind of built out here. It's super simple. Again, this is the part where I've attended the least, just to be totally honest. 
Um, mm -hmm. But this is one of the primary user flows, right? What we're talking about is, you know, how do people use Checkly? Is it, is it mainly as an integration testing tool? Is it mainly in production? Mm -hmm. The answer is that Checkly, right, is a monitoring tool first, but we've adopted and are building out a monitoring as code workflow, right? All right. That unites testing and monitoring. So it makes, it makes all those lines a lot more blurry. I would say a majority of our users and customers have a ton of API checks that they're running every minute, every five minutes, every 20 minutes, right? Depending on their use case and depending on the organization. Mm -hmm. And then after that are also running a lot of browser checks against, you know, the critical user flows that they want to know are always working. So I think the TLDR answer here is you can use Checkly as an integration testing tool. We offer something called private locations that you can have us run against those uh, more ephemeral environments, mm -hmm. but that's some setup that you'll have to do, right? To make it so that our agents can reach said environments and work with them appropriately. Um, but Checkly, I think, really shines right now, um, or really shines more, I should say, uh, when testing against staging and production level environments. That's that's where it's really, really, I think, providing a ton of value. Not that the testing part don't doesn't. Um, I'll also add this. I think I think we're doing something uh, like working on building a a testing UI as far as uh, maybe a dashboard or something similar to that. Testing. I could be wrong, yeah, but I think uh, I think it's going to be something like that if if that is happening, yeah. <laughs> if that is happening, it's sort of a Schrodinger's feature. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, it both exists and doesn't exist yeah, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this new API check that I'm looking at at uh, line 31, so that I would imagine is like a library, like a checkly library that helps you define uh, API checks. Am I reading that right or is it something... That's something else. That's exactly. That's awesome. exactly what we're doing. So, so yeah. <clears throat> what what we should pay attention to here is it a set of doc dot check dot ts file, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're bringing in any dependencies we have right now within our alert channels file. We are saying these are the alert channels we want to use. None of these are real numbers or emails, um, but <laughs> these are the them. alert channels. <laughs> don't call them, don't email them. They're not going to reach back out to you. Um, we're saying, hey, when something goes wrong, this is a number we want to text. When something goes wrong, this is an email we want to hit. When something goes wrong, this is the Slack channel we want to visit. And we have so many alert channels uh, that you have the possibility of using. It's wild. And we also offer a webhook that you can do whatever you want with. But what we're setting up here is a check group. And then we're passing in this new API check, uh, you know, object essentially, and we're giving it the information it needs to mm -hmm. then run, uh, run within Checkly, right? So yeah, you read that absolutely correct. Awesome. So you actually can build a whole system of uh, of checks uh, with uh, with just this simple API, like the alerts. You can set them up. That's that's so sweet. Like uh, I've been in my previous company, I was using the, uh, or I wasn't not really using it because I wasn't part of the DevOps team. That was that was their game, uh, but we were using the pager duty where you would have the oh, yeah. uh, escalation policy and phone numbers and and whatnot. So if there was a check that failed or something that has failed. Uh, there would be a message into Slack and someone would have to acknowledge that within like five minutes or a couple of minutes. If they didn't, then it would escalate to some other person. And then finally it will, at some point it would get to CEO. Uh, that would never happen because our DevOps uh, dev teams were rock stars and they would fix everything right away. Uh, but awesome. as I imagine, like you can, 
you can define a similar flow using your coat. Absolutely. So All right. I think you're touching on something that I think is, is awesome, right? So within this uh, directory, right, we're defining this critical flow check group. And mm -hmm. we saw that in the UI already, right? Here, if I wanted to, we could pass in, you know, there's nothing that would keep us from doing something like SMS fill up channel, right? Yep. If, if this is your team, why aren't we just going to email and text you? So all of a sudden, right, that gray area of who's responsible for what mm -hmm. and who's responsible for what within our project, it becomes a lot more clear. When something goes wrong in production, you reach out to that team. They're going to know the most about yeah. what, what went wrong yeah, yeah. and how to fix it than anyone else, right? Um, what I've done here is not the prettiest <laughs> JavaScript logic ever, but what I've done here, instead of creating, you know, a bunch of, uh, new checks repeatedly, um, using that syntax we were just looking at, right. With, no, I'm doing it again here. My apologies with, uh, this sort of, mm -hmm. anytime I want to create a new check, I have to do this. I'm just passing in the information to a helper function. Mm -hmm. um, that's doing it for me. Right. So I'm just creating these, uh, these checks on the fly dynamically. So All if right. I wanted to throw this helper function into this file here and run that in deployment, we could. Right. Okay. Does that make, does that, does that make sense? Uh, I'm getting a little bit lost and I'm kind of thinking about a, another question at the same time. Because uh, I was talking about the sort of escalation policy, and yeah, I was I, I really grew curious if that's something you could you could set up, because uh, it seems like uh, you can do pretty pretty much anything since it's code driven, so you don't have like a dashboard or a UI you need to click uh, through, and you're limited to what it allows you to do. You can actually write your own logic, as as I understand you you did yourself for so for like uh, you have a list of API checks and instead of calling that function again and again you're just passing it on uh, and and it generates those API API checks. That's that's what I got from exactly. from what exactly. you have shown me. So I got that right. That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Yeah. So, sorry about sorry about doing the uh, the side yeah. quest there. Um, and we can look more at alerting. It's actually something that I think is really awesome. So oh, you, so you actually have well, UI for that as well. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So before, before we started developing, uh, this, uh, checkly developer first sort of approach, right. Mm -hmm. Um, we were doing what you see is more familiar with, uh, I'm going to say like other synthetic monitoring tools where Hey, I want to create a, a browser check from scratch. The mm -hmm. only difference is, right, is that you've always had the ability to do things like, oh, there's actually a template for exactly what I want to do. Let me go ahead yep. and apply that here, right? Um, but here, you know, you have the UI, you can run this script, you can adjust it. Before you launch it, you can test it and get any kind of feedback you want here. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can also, right? We, we have the uh, we have the artifacts there. You can also create your alert settings here, right? We can have double check on failure. So if mm -hmm. when we're running against your website, it fails, let's go ahead and run it again. But what you're interested in right now is, you know, the alerting aspect and how that gets kicked off. So yeah. this would be the individual check has the ability to have its own unique alerts, right? Mm -hmm. The group check also have it, has its own ability to have unique alerts. Mm -hmm. But what we also have is the global ability for you to set uh, alerts, right? So a maximum of reminders within a specific amount of time. Uh, when a check has failed more than three times, right? When a check is failing for more than 10 minutes, 30 minutes, you can save these settings. Mm -hmm. These will be uh, scaffolded across your entire project globally. Mm -hmm. But you can also do this via the CLI, right? Like, mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
So that's does that so you can point? yeah so you can define this either using this dashboard or you can use it uh, define that using code as far as I understand exactly. right how exactly. how many like I, I'm kind of curious like how this is used in real life because uh, you could obviously go crazy with this and uh, and create like thousands of checks that will run every minute that's probably not the not the use case <laughs> that's that that this is built for right uh yeah you probably can handle that right but uh it's yeah, probably absolutely. not something you want to you you want to advise your users to to have because that might be a maintenance hell uh but what would be what would be like the reasonable uh, a reasonable amount of effort uh, on putting uh, into synthetic checks, like have a couple of API tests, have a couple of pages uh, checked and then set up reports whenever anything fails or just keep it on this soft uh, assertion kind of side where just, all right, if it keeps failing for five five minutes, I, I'm, I, I'm sure this, this, is, uh, this is something that changes business by business if you have a bank yep. they probably have more alerts and oh, yeah. uh, and a startup has a little less to keep the costs uh down yep. but i'm wondering like if if i were to um uh, it, it's a question that gets asked a lot like a couple of weeks ago i wrote a blog post how to structure a big project in cyprus because that was something that was asked quite a lot because you get to scaffold a little project you know how that works you yep. can see see that but I think the, the real seniors are the people that can actually, can actually handle the, the complexity of a, of a big project. And I'm wondering about that kind of use case, what would be, how would Checkly use uh, look like in a, in a mature project? Yeah, I think, I, think that's a, I think that's a really great question. And quite a few organizations, right, that have, adopted playwright within maybe a bit more recent history, right? Like mm -hmm. as you and I both know, like playwright within the last two years is like really taken off even mm -hmm. more so in the last year alone. Um, <clears throat> those organizations, right, are, and I think even those users, right, are interested in really pushing the boundaries and getting the most out of their framework. Mm -hmm. So I think when you when you when you bring these two things together, right? Like Playwright doesn't have a Playwright cloud, not not yet at least, right? Playwright's yep. owned by Microsoft, which owns GitHub, which owns LinkedIn, all the stuff that they own. We'll keep that its own its own little area over there. So in a way, they don't need a cloud because they already kind of have one because they give you some built-in you know uh, test results. It's yep. it's good enough. It'll do the job. It's free. Whatever. So if it doesn't have the ability right now, right, to kind of give you a space to look at test results, to look at your website's monitoring results, and your only other options, right, are super expensive, very old tools that aren't developer first, then the space that Checkly occupies is the space for both large and small and even hobbyist users that want to monitor their sites because hey i have a i have a web shop and it pays me i want to make sure it's up every single day every hour of every day because when that when it goes down and it's been down for an hour that's i've lost money right so mm -hmm. what i see commonly is that users and organizations are just doing the math like does it make sense for me to not implement synthetic monitoring to not already use these tests that we have in production when that's just going to create more value for me and my users if it matters for me i think this is a really really great thing if it matters for me to test all the way to production why am i not carrying those tests over into monitoring Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess the answer would be you are testing your code, not really the the product itself, right? Because if you have a if you have a CI pipeline set up, and uh, and you write your test, you're interested in making sure that 
that uh, the code works, right? Sort of a, uh, you write your unit tests, you write your integration tests, you write a couple of end-to-end -end tests, and the thing you are shipping works. <laughs> I guess that's the approach. But I like the, like the fact that you are bringing attention, all right, but that's like not not real life, right? <laughs> that's, that's, uh, there are a couple of other issues that uh, one needs to solve. And usually those fall in on, on the shoulders of DevOps, right? They're the ones doing yeah. monitoring. They're, they're the ones making sure that everything is deployed to the right, uh, right place, etc. And if anything fails, if you have a DNS issue or something like that, it's them who's going to who's going to fix that. I think they're kind of um, uh, stole the wind from QAs, right? Uh, with this, because yep. <laughs> uh, testers were the gatekeepers of <laughs> of quality. But I I think uh, DevOps is doing a, a very interesting job in making sure that uh, that not only the code works but the product is actually being delivered and actually works and monitoring being a big part of that. Um, I guess that's uh, uh, that's kind of, yeah, that, that's where the money is, right? But I mean, I think, I think the money, I think the money is kind of, kind of everywhere though, right? Because the lines between, you know, developers and test engineers or QA, right? And ops are just going to continue to blur, uh, especially, you know, just to, put it like, I guess more frankly, like if organizations are laying people off left and right, who are they laying off, right? Um, more than likely it's, you have multiple approaches, but I'm thinking, right, just from what we've seen out in the wild, it's people that are super specialized and people that are not specialized enough, right? That can't do more than one task. So if you have a QA engineer who understands test automation, right, who knows how to use playwright, uh, that's great. If you have a operations person that, hey, I can look at these tests and I see what's going on. And hey, if I use this solution, I can use one solution for multiple things. That's huge, right? That's how a company saves a ton of money. But that's also how that individual can show that they, you know, that they that they get it or that they're on some next level. Because the combination of solutions is where things are going, right? Yeah. The days of tool sprawl, which <clears throat> I'm sure we're all familiar with, where one organization just kind of like lets their engineers spend money on whatever they want, that's not happening anymore. <laughs> so it's time if it's time if it's time to tighten up, then tools like solutions like this, right? Especially ones that are developer first and are really easy to get going and use, this is where people are going to be going. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that makes that makes uh, a lot of sense. Uh, what you're saying. Um, yeah, I see some people in the chat. Uh, we don't have uh, yet a lot of questions, so so feel free to ask. Um, it seems like we are getting some lags with the uh, with the video. At least the sound is smooth, so that's that's good. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Can, I cannot figure this out. It happened last time as well because on my side the obs and everything is running smooth and for some reason when it gets fed to youtube it it goes out uh laggy and and weird so not sure not sure what's that about so i'll i'll try to close some programs to do a little bit of this little bit of that and hopefully we can uh we can get to a smoother experience um, yeah, <laughs> so, but I guess, uh, but I guess let's, uh, let's continue and, uh, and yeah, feel free to ask any questions. I think so far what we have seen is quite interesting. I had a lot of questions, so we can ask yours as, uh, as well. Uh, all right, Jonathan, so where, where do we move on from now? Cause you were talking about my website and I, and yeah. I think you might be, you might have something prepared. <laughs> Uh, I absolutely I have absolutely nothing prepared. So let's <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's improvise let's together. Any expectations? <laughs> exactly. Let's improvise together. 
Um, let's let's do this. We're not going to go with ideal broccoli. We're going to call it live stream with Philip. We'll create right. some uh, some tests and some checks. When we deploy this, uh, maybe you can share it as a uh, as a little nice thank you for attending the webinar or for people that watch. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll we're going I can to share. monitor Philip's site. We're going to do that. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're going node. MIT, in case you guys really want to steal this and try to not make money with it, we're going to do that. Cool. So we're going to grab this. Um, yeah, we're just going to scaffold out a super basic project with uh, with Playwright and with uh, Chuckly, and we're going to monitor monitor some things in production. So, so give me one second as I do some things. I guess we can do this over here. I'm like pretending like I'm doing something super secret. Like just watch me CD <laughs> out of this guys. <laughs> watch out. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. Get clone. Yeah. In the meantime, right. it seems like uh, the stream is healthy again. So hopefully Hopefully we're all good because while we're talking, it's it's okay. But when we are showing code, it gets kind of annoying. Uh, so uh, yeah, cool. let us let us know if everything is working properly. Um, okay, one second. Yep, yeah, no I'm gonna problem. intersperse. I'm gonna intersperse doing things uh, by UI and doing things through the CLI because. I really don't like Max. Don't tell anyone else that who's not on this live stream, but boy, <laughs> I just do not like. It's so much easier for me to do any development when I'm on my Windows machine. Let's do this later. Okay, cool. So here we are in our project. We'll do something like, uh, which one is it? Checkly, no. Is it? MPX Checkly create. I could be wrong. One second. Let's look at the docs. Yeah, here we are. Cool, cool, cool. Where do you want to? Yeah, we're going to create a little white rooster file. Probably could name that something different. We're going to go with uh, boilerplate so we can see everything that's scaffolded. We'll install our NPM dependencies. Installing now. We'll go ahead and rename this to cool. No, we don't want to initialize a new repo. We're doing a thing. Great. There we go. Okay, so also make sure that we have playwright it, it is scaffolded initially but i'm going to go ahead and init it because sometimes i just like making super sure that uh everything works fine npm playwright init or is it init playwright let's try this honestly don't know no it is npm init playwright i'm so silly there we go do we want to create this Yes, we do. We'll go with JavaScript so life is easy and we see less uh, less complaining. <laughs> we'll do this. No, we don't want the word flow. That's fine. Cool. So this will run up. Cool. So we should be good to go. Let's do something like, uh, Philip, you said that you haven't really explored a lot with Playwright, correct? Uh, not Not so much, just a little bit. Cool. So we're going to heavily rely on Playwright Cogen because it is one of the best ways, if not the best way, to just get up and running faster, right? Super similar to Cypher Studio. Oh, um, so like the test uh, runner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the record and replay thing over here. Exactly. All exactly. Right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to grab your site, right? So what we'll see here in the inspector is that as we are acting on your site, it's creating commands, right? So mm -hmm. super simple. Let's go ahead and visit that now. Sweet. That's you. That's um, me, and that's my face. 
<laughs> what, are, what, are, what are we interested in testing? What, what do you what do you kind of want to do within reason, Philip? Within reason, yeah. So you don't have your credit card prepared, right? No, I don't. I but don't, I, I, I I still think it might be interesting. Wait, you are in the U.S. Uh, I was I was about to like test um, uh, test uh, applying a coupon, but that's like location based. So if you go to workshops, you choose the Cypress Core workshop, and scroll okay. over to to the price. If you are in a location that's um, that uh, is. Uh, what so is if it I click do? this, it should take me where you want to go. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go learn more, and then okay. if you go at the bottom, you'll near the bottom you'll see the price, and and in there, there's there's like a button for getting a discount. But it is something you might not see. Yeah, you actually don't see that. It uh, because it's a it's a button that will appear on different locations. So I guess that would be a nice thing to test okay. within different locations because it like allows you to do so. Uh, but maybe, maybe we could do something something different. Uh, we, different now. I don't know. Try some, honestly, let's try something. Let's try something. Um, so you want to be able to test from a specific location. That should impact how the page is rendered. Is what yes. you're saying, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Because okay. if you're watching, cool. if you visit your the the page from I don't know India, uh, prices are obviously different there. So you can apply a discount code uh, on my page, and that's something that's really like location specific. I feel like that might be an interesting case to test. But the question now is like, how do we get to that uh, to that location now? Can we can we open the page even when we are developing locally and act as if we are uh, somewhere sort of like VPN thing? I don't I don't know if if we can. Can we? I think it's possible. So while you were explaining that, what I grabbed was a super quick user agent snippet, right? So mm -hmm. it's uh, something that you can pass in Playwright that makes yep. it seem more like you're not a bot, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what you also see here, just underneath that, is that we're passing this locale. So we mm -hmm. can try to uh, pass a European based locale. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see which ones are available to us. Locale and time zone. Let's see. Here, uh, would Berlin give us the discount code? Uh, I don't think so. I think you can go to, uh, uh, I think Great Slovakia Britain. is SK dash S K. I'm pretty yeah, sure see. it is. Uh, Capital SK. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. I think the, the it's it's standard. Cool. Let's see if that has any impact on playwright code. It should, but I haven't tried this yet, so let's give this a shot. I'm I'm honestly not not a hundred percent sure because I think uh, I think it will actually check. Uh, by using uh, your IP address, not uh, not by locale, because the the locale is uh, is information that you have like within the browser, right? Yes. So so, so, so I guess that that will not work because there's actually like an uh, like a yeah yeah it's it doesn't work. You're right. I I, ex I suspected that because it's it's actually pretty cool i i wanted to write a blog post about that because you can use vercel to have like geolocation so the page actually calls an api endpoint and it will return the 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 the, the country where you are watching uh where you are viewing the the site from uh so you know what let's let's che uh, let's check something something uh simpler let's go for just let's go for a blog post and open that and making sure that the content actually renders. I think that would be uh, that would be a better way. Cool. That one is your yeah, favorite, is right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cu yeah, cucumber, my favorite. They're actually my one of my favorite vegetables or fruits. I, I never really know. But ha have you really noticed good. that's a that's a cucumber cypress salad? I, I did. I <laughs> I, I, did you make Did you make this yourself? 
Uh, well, myself. It's AI generated. It's uh, from Mid Journey. Oh. I actually use oh, Mid Journey cool. uh, on on my new blog, and it's it can generate some really cool uh, cool images. Uh, so I I generate it. I edit it slightly so it can be viewed nicely on a white background and on the dark background as well. So it's like an icon. And uh, and yeah, then I use it on my blog. Usually that's like the first thing I do, like even before I have the blog post ready, I just generate the image and spend hours on that to have a nice image before I, uh, before I realize that, oh, this blog post actually goes nowhere. <laughs> but, but what you're telling me is that the image, you know, this nice, fresh bowl of cucumber and cypress that's slightly wet it looks like it's slightly wet on the outside yeah um, it uh it serves as inspiration you know it serves sometimes as inspiration. Yeah. yeah yeah like i i That's sometimes hear journey. youtubers talking about uh like how they create the thumbnail first i kind of relate to that as well because sometimes you have an idea and you want to visualize it like you have a visual concept in your head sort of like uh I don't know. I'm writing one uh, run one currently, and uh, it's about nice. base URL because it's an uh, it's a it's a question that gets asked around the internet uh, a lot for some reason. So I thought like let's do a Cypress Basics uh, blog post on base URL. So I imagined base URL like being a base camp to like when you go to Himalayas or something like that. So I have base base camp image for that. Uh, and I spent quite a lot of time generating that image to make sure it looks really well. And, and it does. And now I'm ready to write my blog. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I think that's awesome. Thank you for giving myself and anyone else on this call right now, a sneak peek into your creative process. Yeah. You it's, know, um, it's a weird process, but uh... you could probably train an AI, you know what I mean? Just, uh, let, let chat GPT know how you create these articles and just <laughs> let it flow. Let the spice flow. Well, yep. let's, let's take this to another level. Let's, let's press share on LinkedIn and see what happens. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Oh, okay. Well, it asks us to log in. That's great. So let's grab this URL and then maybe we can assert on it, uh, after this. So yeah, we're going to do some, we're going to do some testing type things. So it should be cool. Um, okay. So let's grab this. Let's go ahead and go into our tests and we'll drop this example spec. We don't care. We'll drop this other one. We don't care about that either. And then we're going to create a new file and we'll do Philip live stream dot spec dot JS. And then we'll paste in what we want to do. We're not doing anything with workshops anymore, right? Yep. We just go probably to the... don't need an HTML dot click anymore either. Mm -hmm. So super <clears throat> this is the forward. interesting thing about those like um, um, record and replay tools. They they sort of do a lot more than you actually intend to do, and you end up like cleaning up uh, the test a little bit. And I really like the aspect of that because if you are a beginner and you're just trying to um, trying to write your first test, you actually realize there's quite a lot of things happening in your, uh, when you interact w with the page and we kind of think it, take it for, for granted, uh, already. Right. So we understand yeah. the web as we, as we interact with it daily and look into the console and look into the elements panel and whatnot, but for, for a beginner to understand like what's going on. Uh, these record and replay tools can be really, uh, really nice. Yeah, I can, I can, I completely agree. Right. Um, I remember when I was first using Cypress studio before I started at Cypress and I was like, this is so awesome. I can create all these tests just by navigating by UI. I actually yeah. used that as part of my interview. Right. Um, <laughs> when I was initially getting brought on and I remember just being excited, I'd, I'd like created some full stack projects and, uh, I was using Cypress Studio and I was like, well, you know, I was able to do a lot of this with Cypress Studio. I got the job, <laughs> you know, so that's, <laughs> that's Cypress Studio helps people get jobs. Like I definitely 
I'm sorry, we're taking a side quest right now. I, I should try to that. Multiple... <laughs> <You should. laughs> yeah, let them let them know you know how to use Cypress Studio. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll show show off with Cypress Studio. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me let me refocus here. Um, all right, so now we're gonna do FBX Playwright test. Uh, we're gonna pass Philip live stream, and then we're gonna use the new Playwright UI mode mm. just because we love it, right? It's yeah, so good. What's that? I never here seen it. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> Check out yeah, the live yeah. stream with so, Debbie. <laughs> there is a live stream with Debbie, which is really rad. So the. <laughs> Looks like it ran and that uh, things are going good. We're waiting for this URL. It says that it hits it, but we never actually see it here, which is interesting. Uh, well, it's, I guess the, the URL opens, but the test doesn't really yeah. care whether it loads everything. I, oh, I imagine. Oh, actually it did. It actually did oh, do it. Um, it did do it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, here we actually see that same page we're already on. We just see the wait for URL occur afterwards. So I wonder if LinkedIn is like blocking automated traffic or something and we're just uh, skating could by. Be. Could be. I yeah. think I, I experienced something with LinkedIn. I think I was, oh yeah, I, I once wrote the script to check like whether all of the links on a blog post or something are live. And when you when you try to hit uh, a LinkedIn page with uh, with a CY request or something like that, it actually gives you like this weird status code. I don't remember what it was. I don't know if, if it wasn't like 600 or something ridiculous. That's not like even <laughs> a standard. It up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, I had to like um, put a condition in there. So if it's LinkedIn, don't, don't even bother because... <laughs> It's impossible to to check that one, but I guess you can do yeah. it with uh, with playwright. At least at least to this point, you know yeah. I'm interested in what's going on here, but you know I'm not entirely sure what's happening because at least we get this uh, this new new tab to open. Or yeah, I guess I guess that's good redirect. because the the if you check the URL, the URL actually has in in one of the query parameters, it has the sharing link. So I think that that would be a good test to have. Cool, right? So now what we've done, right, is we've navigated to your site, we've navigated to one of your uh, articles. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we were just kind of interested in, hey, can I share this to LinkedIn, right? Which mm -hmm. is where a lot of us share things. So um, it looks like you can. So right now we know that this works in production. Yep. You know that if you were to write a test for this using Playwright, at least it would work, right? Yep. Um, so, so what do we what do we do from here? We have this critical test that we know we want to always be working, right? Like if someone was going to share a coupon code or someone was going to share one of the products you sell, we want to know that this functionality works. Mm -hmm. What can we what can we do from here? Do we want to have this be one of the checks that we run with Checkly? I guess the answer would be npx checkly deploy or something. <laughs> right. So so what's going to happen here is that we're not set we're not set up appropriately to run to All run right. Checkly, right? All right. All right. So what we need to do right now. Whoa, whoa. We have this checkly config. Let's actually make this as easy as possible. We have this checkly config. It tells us, you know, what our logical ID of our project is, mm -hmm. what our repo URL is, which that's not it, but that's just what's scaffolded. Um, mm -hmm. How frequently we're going to be running things, and how to find that dot check file, where right. to look for that dot check file. Now remember, in the project we saw before. It was in this checks directory. So right yep. now we're saying, hey, Checkly, if you want to run something, you got to go to this checks directory uh, mm -hmm. and then find that file. Let's let's do something here then. Let's do something like uh, test.check.ps. 
Uh, I'm going to use steal some code from somewhere else because my ability to just kind of make a thing on the fly like that just does not exist. One second. <laughs> uh, here we go. So let's look at this. Right. I'm just going to use something, something like this where we're creating some checks. We're going to pull some dependencies in. Uh, let's do... We don't have any constructs, or I guess we do. There's some base check lead constructs like the check group. Um, we're not running any alert channels, so we're going to get rid of that. And this looks like it should be good to go. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do something like this. So this is wait. This is a this is a check, or because it looks like a configuration. Shouldn't yeah, this so be this in, is the in the check the config. So this is a configuration for a check group, right? Oh, okay. So, okay. So yeah, so we still need to actually create the check itself. Mm -hmm. Doing something. One second. Doing something like this. Boom. So we'll also import browser check from our constructs. And we don't need alert channels. And oh no, sorry, I exited out somehow. No worries. And of course, I've, I'm like locking myself out of my computer while I'm trying to explain something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's import path here also because we're going to need to do some. Wait, reading. you're still not sharing. Oh my bad. Oh, it looks like it, it dropped me from sharing because I locked myself out. Cool. One second. Boom. Okay. So yeah, that was better. We're, in, we're importing path here because we want to join what we're looking for. We'll do Philip live stream dot spec dot ts. Let's see. Let me move this Google thing again. Uh, let's see what we're seeing. Name, string group, check group, degree of response time, blah, 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 blah. It's looking it's for some time. API check. We don't API have those, right? We then. don't. I'm probably doing something terribly wrong here. Um, one second. Uh, uh, by the way, are you in the, in the proper folder? Uh, I'm not. I'm absolutely not. So let's do that. Yeah. Because we have like right. we have the root folder of live stream yeah, with so Philip, and then we have a Philip live stream within that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but where the config is running from mm -hmm. is just from this folder itself. So it should be oh, okay. what, like dot slash, right? And then if we want to do a test match, we have to do something similar. I think it's dot slash. It might just be tests. But I also know, isn't uh, is Murat is uh, is is on the call? He would know. Yeah, yeah. Right off the top of his head. <laughs> yeah, Murat. Which what, what is it? Dot slash or is it just slash? I would say it's dot slash actually. Oh, we're still running into an error. Error loading file. See, we're we're coming along though. Test dot check dot ts. That's not accurate. Uh oh. Wait, that is true. That is where it should be. Encounter an error parsing check files for. Okay. Wait, didn't we do a file. JavaScript project? Isn't there? We did. Like a missing we TS did. config or something. Oh, you know what? We're not missing a TS config. We need to do something like TS at TS no check. No, oh, okay. Because we're doing a JavaScript project, like you said. Okay. We and we get a new error. error. It's always a good sign if we get a new error. <laughs> yeah. Live stream spec.ts, the following dependencies weren't found. Oh, because I'm silly. Okay, hold on. 
Let's uh, just for fun. Let's see what happens here. Cool. That Something's was it. Something's happening. All right. Yeah. So it's running that check. Did I call it home page? I must have. Oh, I did call it homepage. Silly me. Yeah, so we should have called it oh, okay. live stream. Yeah, my bad. So yeah, we had to change the ending of that file to TS because uh, it looks like Checkly is just running uh, natively in TypeScript. I don't know if I have the option to choose between the two, but that mm -hmm. check passed. Yeah. Right? Um, well, yeah, my great. blog is live still. Your, blo your blog is live, but we haven't deployed it yet. Um, so let's name this. Philip live stream one. Uh, what do we want to name this group? Phillips checks. And yeah, we'll just run it from there. Go ahead and deploy. Uh, I imagine that before we did this, uh, you have somehow connected your local computer to the Checkly service so i guess there are some api keys involved or something uh in there yeah i mean so remember many many moons ago at the very beginning of this call when i, I i'm pretty sure i i mpx checkly logged in mm -hmm. we just followed this flow right like i did mpx checkly login mm -hmm. i'm already logged in All so right. i can do something like npx checkly who, who am i because I have multiple accounts, right? So it yeah. is important for me to know that I'm running against the right account. Turns yeah. out I am, which is nice. Um, but yeah, so because I'm logged in through the CLI, I can just deploy this project immediately and say, yeah, that's exactly where I want to deploy it. Yep. All right. And then let's see, let's see, did it, did it work? Aside from the debugging, that was still less than three minutes. <laughs> there you go, right? Fill oh, up awesome. checks. We can pull it up and then see. Hey, let's look at these monitoring results you got going on here. Boom. All right. Cool. It's working exactly the way that we uh, we plan. Um, these artifacts aren't available because there's not a failure, right? Mm -hmm. But we can look at the test steps, see how long each of those steps took to execute, just like you would in Playwright yep. or Cypress for that matter. Um, and then you have access to uh, like web vitals and things like that. So over time, right, we can literally know how your site is performing when this browser check is running against it. Oh, that's sweet. So, so you actually have so we're just... sort of like, I've seen many times, uh, the uh, sort of motivation to to add some sort of performance checks to your end-to-end -end tests and you get that here right so would this be similar to what lighthouse does i guess it is right uh, a little bit so we yeah. got the dom yeah. content loaded we have the first contentful paint or what is yep. it the uh, i, I, I don't know the abbreviations right? yeah yeah. Um, but I, I think, yeah, you're, you're, you're exactly right. So over time, we can just know how healthy our overall web vitals are, mm -hmm. um, which I think is great. And also we're logging the console errors and network errors that are happening. So mm -hmm. uh, if, if you've been messy about building your website and you have a lot of console logs and console <laughs> errors, um, Checkly is going to let you know that you should probably clean that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this, this so is, I guess I, I have been true. messy. I got two two errors there. Yes, exactly. Um, I don't know what they you know, are, you... eh, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's probably like uh, some sort of like Google tracking or something that's coming back. I actually don't um, have that, but it could be Stripe because oh, really? when I load it and navigate too fast, I guess there might be some some killing of the of the process or something. Uh, yeah, but I mean, this, this, this is it, man. All of a sudden, right? Like, you know that 
yeah. your blog posts are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Because I'm sure, you know, when you yeah. create blog posts, you're dynamically generating them. So one functionality is the same as the rest of them for the most yeah. part. Um, so when when uh, someone uh, uses this uh, this service, is there? Uh, I guess what they are going for is like this continuous monitoring. I haven't haven't noticed where where we set that up. So we did the npx checklist deploy, and I guess like that's sort of like hitting the play button, right? Uh, we're good to go. Check my page. Uh, so Checkly will now check uh, check the page uh, continually, or uh, or is that something that needs to be uh, that is yet to be set up? All right. Oh, frequency. Oh, okay. I noticed, but I wasn't sure. So that's frequency. How many times you should in run minutes. in minutes? So every ten minutes, this is going to this is going to be run running. Sweet. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you're about to have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot Views. of traffic yeah. to your website. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my, yeah just put, go for it my my funnels are going to get down the conversion rate will be will drop but at least i get some views <laughs> but what you get what you can also do right like in that case maybe we just wanted to prove uh that you know this worked appropriately this mm -hmm. is something that we want to run in production all the time right yep um because we're doing this monitoring as code workflow, there's no reason why I can't activate or deactivate checks through my, you know, GitHub actions or something mm -hmm. like that. Or in this case, I prove that it works. I see that there's issues. Maybe something's very much on fire. I don't need this to keep going. I could just MPX checkly deploy again and then immediately update that project. So, it won't be activated anymore. It won't be running. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. Right? So no longer running. Yep. That's awesome. Awesome. Just, just, yeah. just like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 wild, man. I mean what would again, be, what would be the ideal way of setting this up? Would you want to have uh, uh, this, uh, all your synthetic checks as a part of your repository, or is it something you would want to set up as a separate project? Sort of like a, this is a monitoring repo. This is where all our monitoring lives. You know, I think I am very biased here and that mm -hmm. I think that the more that this is integrated into your actual code itself. And mm -hmm. the less you create abstractions or layers for you to iterate on these things, the better, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, you being in the testing space and, you know, all the work that you've done here, uh, you know, as well as anyone else, that the more distance you put between the outcome, yeah. right, and the time to value of a thing, the less likely the work's going to be done. So yeah. in my in my mind, and again, like the way that I even tried to set up any projects that I work, uh, that I create for myself, or when I'm working with customers, I, I talk about this and users, I talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. um, you want this as close to your code as possible. Yeah. That so way, it's not, it's not treated as this other separate thing to maybe care about later. No. This is incredibly important for you to get paid. Yeah. It's incredibly yeah, yeah. important for your organization, right? So you can actually, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. So you can actually set up your checks to use some of the tests that are already, uh, that are already um, there. They were written maybe for some other purpose, but you have a smoke subset uh, which you want to run. And you can just select them using the test match attribute of line 19 or something like yeah. that. I think there are some, some, um, are there some tags in playwright or something like that? Could you, could you use those? Oh, there are tags, but there are tags to the, to the checklist dashboard. I was wondering about exactly. like tags, uh, the, the test tags. Yeah. I think there is something yeah. like that in playwright, isn't there? 
So yeah, there are, you can run something that's similar to grepping and tagging the way that you do mm -hmm. with Cypress and the way that you can with some Cypress plugins, mm -hmm. but with Playwright, right. Um, and I think also with Cypress, I have opinions about this unsurprisingly. Um, <laughs> I actually have an entire repo dedicated to what we're talking about right now that I'll share with you and you can share with folks and it's Cypress based, right? Um, mm -hmm. But essentially tagging and grepping is also another practice you wanna stay very far away from because it's not optimal. Um, mm -hmm. That's my opinion. No one's, <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to cater to anyone who thinks differently, um, but selective testing patterns, uh, unless you're selectively testing by the file name are extremely expensive operations to take. And I'll drop this in the chat with you so you can mm -hmm. share with people if you want. Right. Um, so with this idea in mind, right, that um, if the easiest way to adopt selective testing is to only do it by file name, then Checkly is already doing that for you. Yeah. Right? You're already doing it in the best way possible, especially if you're just following this, like, hey, yeah. I am only choosing to run this spec, or if it's in a very big, um, let's see, these specs, right? Um, mm -hmm. This just makes it so that you're being very careful about what you're choosing when already. There's no reason why you couldn't dynamically create this list either, because everything's JavaScript TypeScript. Mm -hmm. so. Super long-winded answer, but yes, you can, and no, you shouldn't uh, use, <laughs> use, use, use uh, grep, grepping and tagging uh, the way that I think you were, you were saying. That's a great answer. It, sort of, uh, it, it could be a good answer for many uh, testing problems, like cucumber, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, any, any time... Anytime you're asking, right, your machine, your super limited GitHub Actions machine that has seven gigs of RAM to look through a file for if a word in a specific case matches something somewhere else that's also being done dynamically, like, just cut it out. Just stop doing that. <laughs> just stop. Don't do that. Don't do that anymore. Don't do your to your, to, to your GitHub uh, machine here. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, I feel like we could wrap this up, but uh, I'm curious if, if there's anything more you'd like to share, but I think this, this is kind of a well-rounded uh, already, uh -oh. but maybe you have some, some, some ace uh, for the end. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you've been oh, acing man. it so yeah. far, so I don't... Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, you're too uh, kind. No, you're no too pressure. Kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... I think, you know, what we'd set out to do today, which was to deploy some end to end tests, you know, in production in less than three minutes, we did that in 10 seconds. So I think yep. we, I think we knocked that <laughs> out of the park. Um, we also created this really nice synthetic monitor for your site, totally free. You know, I am a solutions engineer. I'm not charging you any money. We're, we're <laughs> friends. So consider this a professional courtesy. Thank you. Um, Thank you I so think, much. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think honestly, man, uh, the, the real ace is, is that you, uh, me, other folks in the industry and other folks that like really care, right, about these types of things. Mm -hmm. um, we have these types of conversations because we're interested in moving the envelope, whether or not you adopt Cypress or adopt Playwright or adopt Puppeteer. This is something, and this sort of practice is something that's going to create a lot of value for the user, for the team, for their organization, and can really do something to make this whole experience a lot less painful, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll be doing a webinar that's a bit more polished uh, on my end, right? Uh, about this next week. Um, and I'll be talking about this on LinkedIn and YouTube and everywhere else all the time anyway. So that's my ace yeah. is that I really <laughs> care and that I like that you care, Philip, and this was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone who's here who's watching it now or uh, after, after the fact, uh, go follow Jonathan. He's a really cool guy. And uh, yeah, you can Thanks. be watching out for that, uh, for that webinar. 
We do have a little bit of uh, uh, questions, so maybe we could do a quick round. And sure. I think I'm finally getting, uh, finally figuring out uh, what's going on with my stream. So whenever I switch scene in OBS, for some reason, it starts lagging. We're good with the sound, but we're bad with the with the video. I need to figure this out because this is so annoying. Uh, sorry, everyone, for for that uh, bumpy experience. I'll I'll try to figure out what's what's the problem here. But let's uh, let's do a quick round of questions because we because we had because um, uh, we had a couple. So Martin was asking. Uh, this, and we were actually debating this uh, before we started stream the the whole Cyprus versus playwright. Uh, do you think <laughs> you could that it could at some point be more popular than Cyprus, uh, the playwright, whether it could be more popular, uh, or even substitute? Uh, that that's another oh, uh, interesting uh, interesting question. If it can be substituted. Yeah, let me let me get rid of this pricing thing. That'll be the next question we oh, answer. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm um, not sh not showing it. Uh, not showing the screen. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, maybe good, we could then. maybe we could share the link because uh, I'm I'm yeah, now afraid to switch scenes again because it's going to freeze again, and I hate the fact that it's doing that. Uh, but if you want to show it, we can we we can do that. Oh no 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 big no big deal. Anyone oh, okay. can look at the pricing situation. So yep. Um, I, I think I think that's a really great question. Uh. You know, as someone uh, that worked at Cypress for 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 quite a while, you know, I saw the launch of Cypress 10. I saw Studio leave and come back again. It's one of my favorite <laughs> tools that uh, they, they developed that I think is awesome. Um, I think that Cypress does and <laughs> like <laughs> my bad, uh, like like uh, like Philip was saying, um, we were talking about this for probably 45 minutes before this <laughs> before this. <laughs> Where this uh, live stream picked off, um, I think that Cypress it does some really great things in a really cool, interesting way that also leads to its own sort of uh, issues to kind of navigate around or get over, um, you know, because it runs within the browser's context. So it's going to create specific problems for a automation tool that relies on that, that things like Selenium and things like Playwright just won't encounter by their very nature of their architecture. Um, I think that, you know, Cypress uh, revolutionized testing, right? They're the reason why we have really great modern testing frameworks today. And there's a reason why there's so much iteration in this space. With that being said, um, I do think that Playwright is a very powerful tool. You have things like, uh, how can I say, parallelization just baked in. It's mm -hmm. a lot faster. Uh, it's a lot more, you know, uh, reliable. Um, and, you know, you can test across every single browser just straight out of the box. If you want to visit a new page, you can do that. If you want to open multiple tabs, all of the tabs, you can do that. Um, and that may not matter to a lot of people, but to the people that rely on that for their test cases, whether or not they should be is a totally different thing. They can. <laughs> so um, I think that, you know, I think Cypress will continue to be very popular for some time. Um, I do think that it's Cypress's game to lose um, and that Playwright is doing a really great job of iterating extremely fast and their, their tool is making it so that other tools like other solutions like Checkly, right, uh, can exist and really engage and build off of a really fast tool that just gives you a lot right out of the box and then just create even more value. Hopefully that answered your question. I'm trying to be like yeah, I, kind of PC about it. <laughs> I I have a, a additional question about that. Uh, do you think uh, so? The way you kind of painted the picture, it seems like uh, uh, playwright is this this beast that is just catching up, and it's just a matter of time. <laughs> when it will substitute Cypress. Is, is there anything in your opinion that could, uh, that Cypress could do in order to uh, win the game? Or is it uh, given, the, given the design of, of how Cypress is made, it's kind of inevitable that uh, they will eventually lose to Cypress? I, I don't think you, you said it this way. I don't want to put words in your mouth. 
but uh, yeah. but the picture you painted it it feels like uh, playwright is going faster and they're going uh, in a in a better direction if if I can put those words into your mouth. <laughs> well, I think you know we're just gonna have the exact same conversation we had before the live stream apparently. Um, <laughs> so I think. <laughs> I think Cyprus and playwright cater to two different personas, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think they're very similar personas, but they're a bit different. And uh, uh, Martin, what I mean by that, right, is that playwright, uh, you know, only until last week didn't even have a UI mode, right? Mm -hmm. um, the debugging experience, like, has gotten better over time. I think they're going to continue to wrench on that. You met with Debbie O'Brien two weeks ago. Like I'm sure she's talked about that. Um, so what I'm seeing, right, is that Cypress and the persona that it really works well with, which is more of the test engineer, QA type person, but it's still kind of developer first in those gray lines that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, Playwright is shifting more towards where Cypress is coming from innately because Playwright was much more focused on, hey, can we run these tests fast? Can we run these tests reliably? Mm -hmm. uh, if I need a debug, that's totally fine. Now, I think the thing that Cypress needs to focus on, oh, Jesus, I don't know why I'm setting myself up. You set me up. You set me up. <laughs> um, anyway, so what I'll say is this. I'm sorry. What, wait, <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I, knew, I knew this would happen. Um, I think, I think what, what Playwright's doing, right, is they focused on the thing that really matters to a lot of us, which is when we're running a lot of tests in CI, we need to know that there's no flake mm -hmm. and we need to know that our tests can run quickly. And we need to know it's not going to be expensive. Yeah. Right. CI is where our code lives and dies running locally and debugging locally while it's very important to be able to do that is not where your testing framework is spending a majority of its time. Yeah. The amount of time you spend manually testing a thing and finding results, your testing framework is spending an exponential amount of more time in CI. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, you know, it's almost as if the human experience matters less than the CI experience mm -hmm. in that case. That's an, I don't that's know. an interesting take. Maybe that's a weird take. hot take, but yeah, that, that's it, it, it's an interesting take because uh, uh, we've been discussing with Gleb also a couple of, I think it was already a couple of months ago. Uh, he would argue the the exact op uh, opposite point, and where he would talk about costs of CI and costs of uh, of manual labor. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's interesting to have these two perspectives, uh, you know, to listen to these two perspectives because you go, both get really, really good points. And, uh, I guess as usual, the, the ultimate answer would be, it depends, right? <laughs> but you, yeah. I really like what you said about, uh, I, I think that this is a, uh, at least for me, it's, it's a new way of thinking about that, like the amount of time spent on CI, uh, that's, that's what you, I guess, want to, want to minimize, uh, as well. Um, um, all right. Uh, one more question. We, we mentioned Murat, uh, he was, uh, he yeah. was asking a question. If you could maybe comment on what, uh, uh, what are the differences or he's asking you to comment on, uh, Datadog versus Checkly. I don't don't know Datadog if that's a similar service, mm -hmm. uh, if that's a if that's a competition. Uh, but you can you yeah. can tell us if what is it and, yeah, and what are the differences. Oh man, so Datadog is a huge ecosystem of things, right? Um, and I think this is a great question. Um, so what we saw right within the last what last year and a half or so, uh, as we're talking about all of these lines are blurring. So mm -hmm. these really large players in the industry that already offer, you know, synthetic monitoring, et cetera, are moving more towards the testing space or the developer space. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think Datadog is one of these companies that has a ton of services They're a really well-established company, et cetera. Um, what I would say is that 
they're not a developer first tool. They're not a developer first solution. So knowing um, Yorat, right? Um, I know you, <laughs> I, I know I know how you solve problems. I know what you do. When I think about the sorts of solutions that you've built with Cyprus, right? And I think about, you know, maybe what you could do with Playwright or what you could you do with a tool like Checkly, that's the space you want to be in. If you weren't super technical and you were, you know, uh, a director of engineering who maybe was in an ivory tower somewhere, not touching code, not interested in things like that, you would maybe want to adopt Datadog because it solves a lot of problems. You don't really have to deal with it. Maybe your team doesn't have the bandwidth, et cetera. But that sort of excuse is what's going to cost your company an extraordinary amount of money versus using a developer first tool like Cypress, like Playwright, like Checkly. Mm -hmm. So I think I think those are really the bigger differences, right? Um, as far as uh, as far as I see in the market right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for that answer. Uh, hope hope that answers Murat's question as well. And uh, I guess we can finally wrap this up. Uh, let, so me, let me let oh, me yeah. drop one more thing if you don't mind. Yeah, no, um, I don't mind. Martin, go ahead. Mar Martin also asked, uh, does Playwright have also something like Cypress dashboard? If it does, is it paid? Yeah. Uh, they don't, right? Uh, but what I will say is that uh, Checkly is where you can see how things pan out over time. We are definitely maybe looking at uh, <laughs> creating a testing dashboard type thing for Playwright. So I would keep my eyes peeled, maybe create a hobby plan. Um, I think I dropped uh, something in the chat to you. That was our community. Uh, uh, no, I community. Oh, I don't so think you did. Place. Let's let's share yeah. that. Yeah. Let me let me share that real quick. But yeah, let me see. How can I just invite someone? Why? Why is life so hard? <laughs> you know what? Live I'll, streaming. Uh, I'll... Live streaming is why life is hard. Yeah. Invite okay. people. Here we go. Let's copy the invite link. I'll drop this to you, and then. Uh, then we can say goodbye and so yep. long until until next time. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's say that. Uh, here we go. Uh, I shared a link. Uh, oh, it's a it's a Slack channel. Checkly community. Go ahead and and check that out. Check out Checkly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. This was really fun. Um, soup would love to would love to create like some. Uh, some projects with you um, about, you know, just stuff like this. I yeah. Think, I think the, yeah, we the can strategy definitely, philosophy, go Definitely for continue on do, uh, doing this. It, uh, this was, this was a uh, lot of fun. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Jonathan, for, uh, for suggesting this and for, for joining the live stream. Uh, sorry about the issues we had with the live stream health uh hopefully it will, will not be too bad on the on the recording if it is i apologize i'll try to figure this out because it's freaking annoying so uh but well, i i you let the monitoring yeah <laughs> monitoring for obs i mean we have the monitoring i, I see it on the youtube and it's telling me it's it, it's not working properly so then then the real question uh, uh is like what the hell am i supposed to do with that w when we are already live so i'm not going to restart my machine now or do something like that so yeah hopefully you've been able to enjoy that uh, um, despite uh, the issues i think the audio went well so at least we got that and uh, and it wasn't uh the we had didn't have those troubles the whole time so i guess uh so i guess at least the middle section <laughs> was okay <laughs> uh so yeah uh so thanks again everyone who joined thanks jonathan and i'll see you guys uh next time catch you later bye bye